my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are here watching live, please make sure that you know that you can tune in on Facebook and also you can tune in on YouTube. Those are two various platforms that we utilize to actually keep the conversation going. I know it's one thing to watch the show and, and just kind of take it in, but I'm certain that you will have questions and things are going to pop out to your spirit that you may want to converse about. That's where we want to meet you and actually have a personal relationship with you here on our social media platform. So please feel free to watch the shows there. We are in continuation. We're all in our shows collectively. There are all these shows start to compound on each other. There's always some deep meaning. So I want to prepare your hearts, open your hearts, see what you think about this particular show and see how it reflects on you. Cause again, this is one of those things that is, is easy to deflect and look elsewhere, but look inside for a minute because for you as business owner, for you as a person, these are happening to you all the, this, this conversation is happening to you all the time. Unfortunately, you just don't know where it's coming from. We just have a quick level of responding and just taking it in for the moment, but we don't know what just happened to us. We don't know what just happened to our companies. We don't know what happened to our employer employee relationship that we once had when we first started. But that's what we're going to address today. And today's topic and we're in our continuation is on purpose. Sounds like a very easy show. Makes sense. Yeah, of course. I, I've heard of the book Purpose Driven Business. I've got it. I, you know, I read it all the time, at least once a quarter to keep me going. I understand all that. And if you don't, this is one of those things that I want you to consider. I want you to think about how often purpose is showing up in your day to day. Please look at our first show. In our first show, we're going to talk about the history of purpose and how that person, where, how that purpose was actually supposed to start. But even when it was supposed to start, it may not have, have ever caught up to you. And again, this is a childhood challenge. And in our day to day, one of the things that I don't care how old you are, if you're 45 years old, you can actually have 45 years of not understanding what your true actual purpose here on earth is. And it kills you inside. It hurts. It doesn't feel good. So this is a continuation upon that. And, and starting off, we're going to start off in Ephesians 5, 5, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, 5 through 9. The reason why we're starting there, because that is uh, one that actually merges the whole office space together. It talks about how we should actually treat each other, how we should be in the office, office space. There's a reason why we keep on bringing up this particular scripture because actually part of the executive talk is devoted to the scripture and making it live, making it real to you. The second part of it is actually to show you and amplify the contrast between what's happening to you and what the scripture is saying. Because the only way you know if you're operating in scripture is to actually see your contrast. Okay? Because it has to become relevant to you. That's a lot of the reason why people are having struggling with the Bible is because it hasn't become relevant to you. We're not trying to figure out how it associates to this particular moment. So in this scripture, slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart. <clears throat> Just as you would obey Christ. Obey him not only to win your favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one of you for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, so there's another commitment here. Treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he is who both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism in him. In him. So, there is, there is a sincerity of heart that is required in this particular, in this scripture. There's a sincerity of it. Not just heart, but there's a sincerity component that comes with it. Now, let me go ahead and bring up this, this topic on purpose. If I'm not operating on purpose with you, and I'm in your office space, and I'm working for you, Am I coming with sincerity of heart? No, I'm coming with my heart, and my heart has its own devices. I have my own feelings about situations and how I see things. That's where we have conflict and relationship. 
But without the sincerity of your heart, without my purpose being solidified, I'm coming into your office. I come in with respect and fear and with, with heart, but I'm not obeying Christ. I'm still struggling with that relationship also. So there's two struggles, not only with you, but also with my relationship with Christ because I'm trying to figure out why am I here? Now, I'll obey, you, I'll obey them not to, just to win your favor when you're looking at me, but as slaves of Christ, no, because I'm not there yet. Okay, and this is as an employee, doing the will of God from your heart. I'm not doing the will of God because, again, that operation with my relationship with Christ is struggling. So you're getting half of me. You're getting half of me because I'm coming with a purpose issue. Okay, I cannot serve you wholeheartedly. The only emergent thing that I'm serving is the money because that's what's important to me as if you're serving the Lord. So I have no reference point as to how I serve the Lord and how I should serve you. Because again, I'm not coming into your office space with purpose. Not as people, but because you know that the Lord will reward each one of you for whatever good that they do, whether slave or free. Well, guess what? If I'm, re if, if I'm having a struggle with my relationship with the Lord, do you think I'm waiting on a reward from the Lord? Do you see the struggle and the battle that I have as an employee? I came to your table and to your office space and what you're developing with this issue. Now, let's talk about you as a business owner. How can I treat you in the same way? If I'm struggling with my purpose, I created this business. doesn't mean I, don't, I know if it's my purpose or not. I just created this business that's important to me. Okay, It has a sense of purpose to me, but it's not, maybe, may not be my wholehearted purpose. Okay, it says, do not threaten them. Don't you know if you get on my nerves as an employee, I may cross that line of threatening you. <clears throat> and you, since, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. So if I'm struggling with my relationship with, with God, guess what? I, I don't know about your master. Or we're, we're having the same struggle. So now we're just pitted against each other. So we have two people, two different people with two different struggles of, with the same common theme of um, purpose, struggling with purpose. And where does that merging component come from? Because there's, in this scripture, is, there's a merging component. And we'll talk about it in our, our later shows. Now, James 4, 1 through 3 says, what causes fight, fights among you? Don't they come from the desires that battle within you? Your desire, you desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but because you can't get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend it on your, uh, to get your pleasures. Now, let's, let's talk about this scripture real quick. Why, why, do I, why is this starting to show up in a lot of the shows for those that have been following? Because there's very profound information in this particular uh, scripture here where they're talking about, don't they come? We're, we're to, what causes fights among you? Don't you know I'm already frustrated if I have no purpose? Don't you know that everything that comes across my path, there's a sense of this bothering me? Don't you know that things that may be happy for me, there's going to be a, a temporary happiness that comes along with it because I'll pick it apart and I'll find something that bothers me about that. So there's a fight that's going on with me and it's based on the principle of the purpose that I'm struggling with because I don't have it. I don't know what exactly it is. But right now this seems to fit, but I'm still frustrated because it's not what it is. Now, don't they come from the desires that battle within you? See, there's a battle, not out there, but within you. There's something that's going on within you. Again, I don't know what's going on within you. You didn't come to the table and say, hey, you know what? I'm struggling with my purpose. How about you? <laughs> that's not a normal conversation. It's a good one, but it's not normal. So I have some things that are battling within me. Okay, so you, you, you desire, to, but you don't have, so you start to kill. You go out for, you kind of go out for blood. If you're looking out, if you're looking back to our last show, you will see that we become dangerous to others. When we're operating with no purpose, we become dangerous with others. And this is where the scripture attaches 
to that particular statement there. So again, make sure that you re, uh, revert back to the last show. You start to covet, okay? Because again, remember, in our last show, what did we talk about as far as the enemy is concerned? Doesn't he love the fact that you're, out, you're born in the flesh and you have no purpose? Guess what? Because you start to covet, which is, part of the, which is part of the commandments, okay? That you shall not covet. Now, but you start to do it because in your flesh, you're on, everything needs to gratify you. You start to have selfish ambition about everything. Everything is mine, 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 mine. You become very selfish and self-centered. I want to do a litmus test real quick and make sure you open up your hearts. Don't become closed off if you feel like this is, if this is you. It's not personal. This is to open up the, the gateway to freedom, to love. Okay? So you start to quarrel and fight. It is very easy to fight with your boss. It is very easy to fight with your employees. And as soon as you start to do this, as soon as flesh against flesh, what else are you going to do? You're going to quarrel and fight at some point. Are you operating scripturally? No. That's how you can tell that you're out of bounds with your relationship with God. Okay? You do not have because you do not ask God. Guess what? That relationship is struggling, so you're saying whatever, God, and you just keep moving forward. You found strength in the flesh. The flesh is saying, yes, I got you covered. You say, I got this. You, you know, we, we have that statement out here nowadays of, oh, no, I got this. You're talking about your flesh. You're, that is a statement of the flesh. Okay? So we're asking with the wrong, mo wrong motives. Again, something has happened to your tongue. If you're operating through the flesh, then everything that you're saying is from your flesh. So everything that you're sp saying is speaking death. Okay, you have the wrong motives about where you're trying to go with everything. But again, you bring this to an environment, to a work environment. Now, let's, not, let's make no mistake about this. Because this, this is where everybody, this is where the enemy can get us hung up. Well, when I woke up, it was on purpose. When I went to go do that, it was on purpose. You're absolutely correct. Let's go ahead and get that hang up out the way. There is a purpose for everything that you're doing. Is it coming from the wrong spirit? That's the question. That's why I don't want you to get hung up on this show and try to start blocking it off. Because I realize that in this topic, the Lord realizes specifically that there is a purpose for everything. It's your motives that causes the pain. It's the motives behind your purpose is what causes the pain. That's where this thing is, is so impactful. Again, please don't shut down. Stay open. Because this is where freedom happens. When you're not on purpose, we give each other our temporary. You know, and for couples, this is the way that we can relate. For marriage, you can relate. For relationships that you have all across the board, let's just put them out there, you can relate to this. The biggest pain that you feel from the other party is not, it is part of the fruit that they bear, but it is their temporary that they're bearing also. You're in relationship to give longevity. That's how you're built to, to go forward. But when you give me your temporary, and that means you're not consistent in what you do, you're doing it, you know how it is in a relationship. Let's just talk about that. You know, you, you do something over and over again for maybe a month, but then all of a sudden you stop. You gave me your temporary. That's painful for me because I'm in relationship with you. In the office space, you, there's a temporary. You come in and give me your best in the first couple of months, and then all of a sudden you start to trail off. You're giving me your temporary. Same thing with the owner. I hire you, and I'm your best friend for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden I don't talk to you anymore. I gave you my temporary, and I left you with the empty feeling that you already had, and I spread it open just a little bit more and took a little bit of a piece of life from you. The thorns and thistles. This is where the pain happens. See, it's, it's painful when you run into a wall, and... 
Let's just be for real. We all, we all have some level of clumsiness. <laughs> you bumped yourself into the wall and said, ouch, okay. That hit for a little bit, but, but have you ever just hit a thorn bush randomly? And you're sitting there checking your finger the whole time. You're like, wow, that thing still, you still feel it. Those thorns and thistles are just a little, little, just a little cut into your flesh. That's what this pain feels like. It's like a constant stepping on thorns and thistles all the time. When you have, when you give somebody your temporary. And so when you give somebody your temporary, this is what their day-to-day interaction feels like with you. That's why I say, that's why you get to that point of, I don't want to be around that person. Because your, your body has become calloused over and you're still opening up calluses because the relationship is still temporary. Had not given your all. This is what God paid attention to. He doesn't pay attention to your flesh. He pays attention to your heart. Because that's what he's trying to nurture. So we're always talking about the heart of a person. Okay? So this owner has a particular heart, right? The employee has heart. And this is their first relationship. It's like, you know, the way that people interact with an employer, employee, it's, it's probably one of the most, it's almost like you're dating. You know, you meet each other, and all of a sudden, it's the best conversation that you have. Oh, my gosh, I've been looking for you forever. I've been looking for you forever. That's your mission in this company? Oh, my goodness. I mean, how can anything be greater? Where have I been all my life? This is the perfect timing. This is employee to employee. Man, I've been looking for an employee just like you. Do you realize the, the level of excellence that you can bring to this table? My goodness, where have you been all my life? Okay, so it's almost like this, wow, wow moment. It's amazing. It feels good. And this is the start of that relationship. Again, the relationship is at its highest level. Okay, so the first three, four months, you're telling your friends, and this is a, actually both of the conversation, oh, we hired one of the most amazing people. Hey, I want to make sure we announce you to the whole company because this is, Oh, my goodness, we've never had anybody like this before. And then an employee is like, man, I've never been in a company, so I'll work overtime. I'll stay here an extra 20 hours a week just to make sure that this mission is filled and so on and so forth. Like, I mean, juices are high. The relationship with this becomes a little sour. Why does it become sour so quick? What happened to this highest point that it started at? Weren't they best of buddies? Weren't they just, I mean, it was just the closest thing you've ever seen. But the only merging component to two people with two different aspirations, they're trying to come together as one, and that's Ephesians 6, 5 through 9, is being on purpose. But what are the people's purpose? Because, again, this is why this relationship got at its highest point. At the interviewing table, you guys were talking about the purpose of the company, where the company is going, what they're trying to do. And you said, yes, this is perfect. I have a perfect fit, a perfect cog in the wheel to actually help you get there, and you can help me get to where I'm. So this is a perfect. So now it's on purpose. That's, what, that's what's bringing this relationship together. But let me show you something a little bit different. And besides the companies, this used to be my resume. Okay, so we have uh, an employee's resume looks like this. This is what makes it really challenging, and this is what can't be talked about here in the office space because it's an HR, it's a law issue. But when I look at this resume, okay, I've been here three years at Acme International, okay? And I've been here five years for Jordan Shoe Shop. And then I've been at 2.5 years for Jones International. All right. That's a normal resume. You're trying to find out where you want to go. You have a lot going on. Okay, this has just been your history. So, is there anything wrong with that history? Again, it sounds normal, but what's what's the challenging component in it? In this history, what I do see from an employer's point of view is I see a person trying to find their purpose. I'm, this person is, is, is starting to hop around trying to figure out where their purpose is, but there's a negotiation in this history. You can look at the pay rates 
and actually starts to trail where this person's going. This employee may be bringing their temporary to your office space. They're trying to get settled somewhere. Yeah, they have this issue. You know, it's one thing if you move, but it's one thing if you're in the, and again, this reminds me of my resume. And I know exactly it because this is exactly what I used to do. I used to be at a job for a little bit, and the common theme, and then once I settled down and got my life together, common theme was money. Well, this one paid more. This one I can sell better. I can do this. There's a better here. There's better here. Guess what I was searching for? Why I kept on saying everything was better somewhere else. I was very temporary. I was looking for purpose. And so I brought my temporary to each of these entities. That's what's starting to sever this relationship because I'm bringing the temporary and I'm showing it in my resume. So does that work for the office space? How does that work for the relationship? Because again, it started at the highest point. And you know how it is. It starts at the highest point and all of a sudden this relationship acts like it never happened. I start to develop a limited outlook on everything because, again, my flesh is happy, my spirit feels like it's happy, but then all of a sudden, I start hitting a lull. Okay? So you're on that roller coaster, and all of a sudden, you just start hitting a plateau. And once you hit on the plateau, this is the employees, this is some of the interactions that you're receiving from that temporary uh, feeling from that employee. You're starting to be late to work all the time. You remember that person couldn't wait to actually get to work, was on on time and stayed after work and did everything, but now they're starting to be late to work all the time? That's a temporary momentum there. I can't stand work. You see it on Facebook all the time. You see everybody, they got memes, they got posts specifically to talk about how bad they can't wait for Friday, if they don't like Monday, and Wednesday is almost, you know, is ready for Friday. I mean, there's a whole situation out there when it comes to work and the, the viewpoint. That's because that's a temporary conversation. There's no on purpose for that job. And only temporary, I'm only there temporarily because it's taking care of my need, not because I'm working for the company. They don't appreciate me enough. See, this is an employee coming uh, to, to, the, to the workforce. What, I mean, what more are you, what, what, what attention are you looking for? But at the same time, this is, becomes our attitude, this becomes your paradigm, your outlook, because you're thinking about you. Remember, when you're struggling with purpose, you start to become very self-absorbed. You start to operate in idolatry. You start to have infighting. Infighting becomes something that you, you're, you're like a walking time bomb. Everywhere you go into the office, oh, shoot, here comes X, Y, Z. They're about to start a war. They're about to start gossip, and they're about to start doing stuff. Okay, that becomes that employee's mode. An employee's temporary becomes a direct attack on the company's money and resources. So when you look at high turnover rate, companies have gotten to the point, some companies have gotten to the point where turnover rate is, it makes sense for them. They're like, oh, that's just part of our business model is that the turnover rate, so then you look at the budget, is that they're budgeting for this turnover rate. But how much does it cost to let a person go to rehire, to train, and to go throughout the process again to, for that person to be let go. Isn't that attacking your money and resources? It's attacking your resource of time. Now, on the employer side, what is the employer's purpose? What do you think that they're thinking about? They're thinking about the revenue. So then the employer's perspective and everything that's happening is the mindset of an employer is operating from a temporary point of view because they're thinking about money. They're not thinking about the scripture because nowhere in that scripture is Ephesians 6, 5 through 9 that said, masters, get more money from your slaves. And it, they didn't say anything in that. But that's the only thing that you start to use people for in this temporary mindset when you're, all you're thinking about is money. But again, it has the derivative from the purpose. Now this relationship has become rocky all of a sudden. The employer-employee's relationship was very, it was a very tight relationship. It was strong. It was something that you've never seen before. But then all of a sudden, this employer-employee can't wait for one of the others to leave. Oh, I hope that employee gets fired. I just do one more thing and you're gone. You know how it is. Okay, or man, I hope this, 
I hope this owner just sells the company and just go somewhere or he gets let go or something. We get new management. The employer's fruit, the way that I listen to you as an, as an employee, it turns, it changes. Because I don't hear you anymore. As long as you're, if you're not talking the direction that I'm going, then I don't hear you anymore. I stop, to commu I stop communicate, communication with you. You remember again, at the very beginning of that relationship, the communication was off the charts. Okay, we knew everything that was going on. But now that the, there's a lack of communication now because there's a strife in our relationship. Because I got out of purpose with you and I changed purpose for temporary. Okay, oh, you're just going to be another turnover rate, so I'm not going to really invest a lot of time in you because, yeah, most employees just quit after a while. My perception, I'm speaking from a perception, uh, that becomes very limited. I'm not going to give you as much as I can. As long as you make money for me right now, again, I'll, I'll have to replace you anyway, so just make money and we'll, that'll be our mutual understanding. You see how easy it was to get away from Ephesians 6, 5 through 9 based on the fact of two entities, two people are struggling with purpose? Employers must realize this. This is to you, employers. You didn't just hire another person. You have somebody's life in your care. Let that marinate for a little bit. You have somebody else's life in your care. But we have come to the point when you're, when you're not operating on purpose, people are very expendable. They come and they go, so what, so what. You've heard the statements and the cliches out there. But those are true statements because that's actually how we feel and how, how deep of a relationship we have with people and how much we distrust and uh, struggle with others. It's right there. So what do we do with this show? Well, this show, we're not taking any action except for thinking. Think and see what your office space really looks like to, to, to dive in to see if, this is is, if these issues are here. And go directly here to the purpose. Have we forgotten the reason why we're here? That's what I want you to, that's what I want you to do. And on Facebook and also on YouTube, I want you to see what you came up with and see how things have changed and what you started to think. And we're, we're, we'll start to get some tools over, um, over Facebook to actually come back. But again, tune into our next show because our next show, we're going to actually start talking about, again, how the Lord sees it and how he wants it done. But in the meantime, I want you to go to Facebook and also LinkedIn. Thank you very much. I have to get back to work. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.